Hey everybody, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well out there. I am boondocking and I am loving it. This is my setup right on the beautiful Columbia River and we're going in there today. Yeah, thanks for joining me guys. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad internet. Link below in the video description how I upload all of these videos. Uh, more on the water here in a minute. It's going to be 98 degrees here in Lyle, Washington. That's Oregon. That's Oregon. This right here is Washington State. But I want to start this video off because in the last two videos I have hinted that there's something else traveling with me between Tater Tot and Frida. My smart car and my RV, there's something back there and uh, I'm gonna share it with you right now. Uh, before we get to the back of the RV though, uh, just wanna remind everybody that yes, I do have a Harley. I shipped my Harley and trailer back to my shop in Illinois because I can't have that trailer and the car. Uh, the car is a wonderful tool for exploring and making videos where the motorcycle turned into more of a, mm, a hobby or a, a toy almost. But I didn't want to get rid of it. I just wanted the car with air conditioning and heated seats for the winter and stuff like that. However, there's something about being on two wheels that if you're a rider, you know, you're going to miss it when you don't have it. It's the truth. And I will say that I should never have gotten rid of my little Honda Rebel 250. Roxy the Rebel, I sold her and I didn't need to. I had the shop. I could have just left her, left her there in case I ever wanted to change. But the cool thing about those bikes is that they are a dime a dozen and available anywhere in all different sorts of conditions, mileage, and colors. And so I found a pearl white 2006 Honda Rebel CMX 250. I paid $600 for Roxy the Rebel three years ago. As a matter of fact, wait a minute, I have to show you a picture. Literally three years to the exact day that I bought Roxy and Reba the Rebel. Welcome, Reba the Rebel. In pearl white. Gosh, she is gorgeous. Not, not perfect, uh, but definitely a barn find. She's got some rust, she's got some gas leak issues, and she needs a little bit of brake work, but she's here. She's good. Now let's see, I got a picture somewhere when I first got the bike, had 599 miles. Just unbelievable, you never find that. And I've put, let me see, what does it say? 700, so I've put on 101 miles. <laughs> I think I'm now comfortable with the bike and have a lot more confidence with Reba here. So this way, when I need my motorcycle fix and I, I wanna go cruise some back roads or feel some air in my face, it is really easy to unload this bike and keep the car connected or vice versa. If it's too hot, if it's pouring rain, cover the bike, unhook the car and go take the car for the day. That way I'm not stuck with one or the other. I have both. Uh, now, if you're new to my channel, this might look weird. It's like, Eric, you can't, you can't tow Blue Ox underneath uh, a carrier that also has a motorcycle. Uh, this is not the first time I have done this exact same setup with my other motorcycle and the car worked great, towed it over 2000 miles across the country with no issues. Plus I have hauled motorcycles on the back hitch many, many times before in my very first uh, RV actually, Tilly, the Tioga. I had my red, Honda PCX 150 on the back of that RV. And then I upgraded and I got a Yamaha TW200 Dual Sport. And then on Yoda, my other Tioga, I had a Honda Grom, a green color. And then of course I had Roxy the Rebel, which looked similar to this white Rebel here. And now Reva the Rebel is on the back of the RV. Show you how it all works. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it or the wrong way, so don't do what I do. This is not advice or anything. However, I'm just gonna share it. Uh, my RV on the extended chassis is limited to towing 5,000 pounds behind it or 500 pounds directly on the hitch. So my car only weighs 1,500 pounds, a fraction of that 5,000. The bike weighs 291 pounds. The carrier weighs 89 pounds plus. I'm gonna zoom in here and show you how I have this done. 
So I got this on Amazon. This is a dual hitch receiver with two points of contact on the top accessory here. This is rated for still 500 pounds direct weight here and 5,000 pounds towing on this bottom part here. And we're only towing 1,500. You can also see I've got several anti-wobblers. Okay, so I put one on the top here. I put one on the side to keep this from moving in all different directions with the bike on there. The car underneath, Everything is locked with locking pins, even on the one down there. If we come back around to this side, the Blue Ox system is simply right below the uh, deck ramp of everything, and it actually makes it a little more flat as we step back, so that's even better. The car does extend out past the RV a little bit more. How much? Well, exactly eight inches, because this is an eight inch dual receiver adapter. So, and also, when you turn the car, I have a video somewhere that shows this, but the car will not hit any part of the ramp or the motorcycle deck. In fact, I'll uh, link a video in the video description and at the end of this, uh, showing you when I had this same exact system with my other motorcycle and car behind Miranda, my Class A, and I put some GoPros so we could see how everything operates on the road. It's, it's solid, guys. However, without the stabilizers and anti-wobblers, it was not very solid but the bike is secured on the back bumper. I've got it secured up here through with soft straps on the handlebars down here. It's in a wheel chalk over there. The bike moves a little bit just because of the actual suspension of the bike itself, but I'm okay with that. The big thing you wanna remember when doing this, if you're using the bike's suspension to help the travel, make sure that you get these closed loop straps. These are Rhino brand, Rhino USA. I, I've always liked these ones. That way, if there's slack here, this won't come off because it's a closed loop. It's no Harley. It's, it's, it's no Black Betty. And I'm looking forward to riding my Harley when I get back to the shop uh, later this year and check in and drop off a few collectibles and stuff. But in the meantime, when I wanna go for a ride, it's great. It actually um, does not block the RV lights. So if we take a step back like this, I mean, even the car doesn't block those turn signals and brakes, but when the car is connected, the brake lights and turn signals work here. However, somehow magically, I'm still gonna get 500 billion comments below and people telling me that I'm doing everything wrong and I should do it their way. Uh, all right, all right, whatever, you get a cookie. I am going to at least show you how easy it is to get this bike off. I have to do undo this strap here, those two straps there. The bike will lean against the spare tire while I unscrew this ramp. The ramp comes off, hooks into these holes, ramp goes here, walk the bike down. And so I'll show you that right now. And I still stop on the road and check the straps periodically. I aimed that camera down so that I can see everything the motorcycle's doing while I'm driving, sitting in the driver's seat. But these straps won't last forever, so you just gotta, you gotta stay on top of it and make sure that there's no rips or cuts like every morning when I leave. Okay, once I loosen that one, the bike leans against the spare tire. Also, the bike is in gear, so it acts as a, like, like a natural stop so it won't slide anywhere. Undo the last strap and I just put a hand on it to make sure nothing bad happens. There's two bolts holding the ramp together. Ramp comes off, clicks in place. And then I'll just feather the brake as I walk it down. Easy peasy. Just like that. Putting her back on the ramp is the same exact process, just in reverse, except uh, with this bike, I turn it on and I put it into gear and I feather the clutch and the gas and I have one finger on the actual front brake there. So I'm feathering the gas, the clutch. I have plenty of videos showing how I get it back on the ramp. It's really just the same exact process and it's no biggie. So yeah, now you've met Reba the Rebel. Uh, the seat, the passenger seat back here does have some black tape on it. So, I mean, like I said, she, she ain't perfect, but it she's complete and, uh, man, only 700 miles. You want to hear her purr? Here, let me get the keys. All right, you ready for this? Here we go. Oh, listen to her rumble. She's so loud. Okay, I didn't actually start it up, but it is quiet. It's a quiet bike. Turn the gas on. <laughs> I 
that's it guys. Just running now. Not warm, but running. She sounds so mean, so mean. She's like a rebel. <laughs> and the other cool thing about a rebel is it's not like the whole Harley thing where you have to wear all this massive equipment and leather chaps and all this crap. A Honda Rebel is a shorts and t-shirt kind of bike. Squeaky brakes. But yeah, you should wear a helmet also if you're going to go out onto the road, blah, blah, blah. Don't do what I do, you know. I mentioned that I only paid $600 for Roxy the Rebel. I paid less for Reba. People are giving away these Honda Rebels because these are the bikes that a lot of people learn to ride on and then they're ready to upgrade. The RV community loves small bikes like these that don't weigh very much because they can go on to the back of the RV. All right, I got AC on in the RV, running off solar, maintaining 100% there, but I do wanna go dip in this, so let me go get some swimming trunks and some sunscreen and cool off in the Columbia. All right, so the water itself is really clear. The water is, but the rocks are sharp, <laughs> jagged, and covered in moss. Very, very slippery, sharp rocks. And uh, not exactly the best way to enter a river, but I'm trying it. <laughs> and no matter how far I go out, it just continues to stay shallow. <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm up to my knees now, finally, as I just very carefully tread through here because I don't want to twist an ankle. But it's not, not cold. It's not cold water. It reminds me a little bit of like Shasta Lake in California where it's like so warm outside and then you want to go dunk or something. So you get out there and then it's like, wait a minute, is this a hot tub? Is this, a, is this entire lake? This is a river. And it's still warm. The water is warm. All right, actually, this does feel good now. <laughs> it just, it's really shallow. But is it refreshing when it's this warm? No, it's definitely, the water is cooler than the outside air. This. All right, hey, everybody. The sun hasn't officially set, but it is set for us because it is set on the other side of the mountains over there. Uh, so I went ahead and brought the flag down and uh, the temperatures are starting to drop a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really like this place. I really, really like this free campground. You can stay here for, uh, seven nights if you want. Did get a couple other truck campers joined us over here, met them, both nice guys. And, yeah, I'm just gonna chill out here and, uh, probably watch some TV. Got some really good Wi-Fi out here. Tara Bobera, say hi, honey. Are you stressed? I got the AC on for you. You shouldn't be stressed. Yeah, I got the air, I got the blind closed to keep the AC in here. Hey, Opie Dopies. Him's goods. Yeah, you guys are goods. All right, I love you too, buddy. Oh. I remember this place. However, trains don't really bother me, and the only reason he's blowing his horn is because there's that road that you come in on up there. Um, but yeah, that might be why there's not a whole lot of people here. Uh, I know, personally, a lot of RV boondocking friends who cannot deal with trains, even without the horn, just the vibration that you can faintly hear out, out, out there of them driving by out there can drive people crazy. I, I guess I'm just used to it. I mean, I'm on my 11th year of RV life and uh, trains don't bother me that much. It would never be something I would move for. This bothers me a lot, a lot less than say your neighbor RVer pulling up right here and bringing out their open frame construction generator and not only running it all day, but running it all night and then running their quad and jumping behind. <laughs> See, see where I'm going with it. There are much more unpleasant things that, that can happen while you're boondocking and trains trains don't bother me too much. I will still be I will still be able to sleep tonight just fine. Yeah.
But I am going to go ahead and close this video out, guys. I want to do some editing and hang out with the kitties. And thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in a few days. Please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Jeez. And leave a comment and say anything you want, as long as it's nice. We'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.